9-11, a time of trouble. Following the attacks on September 11, 2001, America entered into a period of time known as the times of trouble, which were prophesied of long ago in the Bible. And you know what sometimes makes me wonder if it was just coincidental that these things happened on the date 9-11, which corresponds with the emergency calling number 911 adopted here in North America. Or if Almighty God allowed it to happen on that day in order to get our attention. I believe he was trying to get our attention. But looking back on that day, I remember being awakened by roommates after having worked a night shift to see the television footage of the two planes that crashed into the World Trade Center buildings as well as the aftermath of the plane that crashed into the Pentagon. While watching I sat there stunned and a little confused just like many of you probably were because we were living during a time when a false sense of prosperity and security held, had lulled most people into complacency. No one expected anything like this to happen. I mean, besides the gross immorality of President Clinton in the prior years, everything seemed to be going great. Most everyone appeared to have a job, home values were on the rise, and gas prices were reasonably low. But 9-11 changed all of that. For after the attacks, people began to panic, not knowing what would happen next. They rushed to gas stations and grocery stores, unsure whether or not they would be open the next day. The FAA shut down all flights for about a week or so, and during that time, I can remember looking up into an eerily empty sky, with the exception of a periodic convoy of military craft flying in a single file line across the sky, probably going somewhere to prepare for war. But should that day of trouble have been a surprise to us? No, it really shouldn't have been. For God warned us long ago that these types of things would happen if our nation, which calls itself one nation under God, ever began to break his covenant and ignore his commandments like we did in the decades prior to the attacks. For this was just one of the warnings he passed down to us by the pen of our forefathers. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and this people will rise up and go a-whoring after the gods of the strangers of the land, whether they go to be among them, and will forsake me and break my covenant, which I have made with them. Deuteronomy 31, verse 16. You know, it seemed all we could hear during the time before and after those attacks on 9-11 was how that we should all become more diverse. America should become a multicultural nation. We should be willing to accept all other religions as equal and become a nation, a divided nation, that worships many different gods instead of one nation under God. And if you really look at it, an idol or a false god can be anything that one pays more attention to other than God. It can be another person, a business, a car, a house, or whatever else comes before God. With that said, I've read some statistics that say that the average American watches over seven hours of television a day. I don't think we want to even compare that with the average amount of time Americans read their Bibles. I'm sure, it, I'm sure it would be quite disappointing. But this is how God said he would react to the worship of false gods. It reads, Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them. I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us? because our God is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day for all the evils or calamities which, shall have, which they shall have wrought in that they are turned to other gods. Deuteronomy 31 verses 16 through 18. 
And since 9-11, things have been going downhill fast. America has gone deeply into debt by entrenching itself into two major wars. Uh, see Deuteronomy 32, verse 25. And has elected a president whose primary mission is to, is to destroy everything that our nation stands for. Well, he uses the more politically correct phrase to fundamentally transform America. But we know it means the same thing. The good news is that we can turn things back around if we as a nation turn back to God and start living up to our motto, one nation under God. If we do that, God has promised us that he would restore the damage done to us by the devouring locust army of liberals, socialists, and progressives led by the Kenites. See the book of Joel. But if we don't turn back to him, things will get much worse. So pray for your nation like never before during these times of troubles. Be that light in a dark place for others to see by. And remember to include God in all aspects of your life so that you can be a Christian overcomer.